to our viewers around the world. Peace on Earth from CNN. Option I can think now is well, of course, we're out of money because ValueJet has the money they offer to refund the money, but we're still at a standstill. For about 3,000 unlucky travelers, canceled flights and pre holiday panic, courtesy of ValueJet. Down with the crew. That's what bigger means. And Pip is like house. And what's up is like, how you doing? Is it a second language or slang, and should it be taught in U.S. classrooms? It was very frightening. I mean, there's no question about it. I thought everything that, that normally just happens easy just kept getting worse. He's at home in a race car, but a snowmobile leads him to danger. Legendary racer Bobby Unser and his treacherous mountain ordeal. Hello, I'm Jean Meserve in Washington. This is Prime News. Republicans are lining up behind House Speaker Newt Gingrich. The GOP leadership fanned out across the Sunday talk shows, predicting Gingrich will be re-elected to the post in January, despite an admitted ethics lapse. He's acknowledged that he's made these mistakes, that he is responsible, and he's accepted the ruling of the committee, and I think with an enormous amount of grace. Yeah, I've talked to Democrats and Republicans who want to see us proceed with bipartisanship. I, I, have just I completed. also want us to proceed with a I bipartisan want to jump over fashion. Yeah, but you're, but you're jeopardizing our chance to do that, David, no, by I'm continuing with this rhetoric. No, I'm not. What I'm trying to rhetoric. do is make sure that the Speaker, second in line to be President of the United States, lives up to the standard that he set. We don't need people in the Speaker's chair who lied to Congress and, who in, not fact, lied. and who in fact was engaged in this David, tax David, scheme over a period lied. of seven a years. Is some, a lie is something that... David, a lie is something that people do intentionally. And I will say, I don't, I don't know if The speaker did this intentionally. Right, Gingrich acknowledges he violated House rules when he used tax exam groups to finance a televised college course he taught. Gingrich faces possible reprimand or censure. The latter would preclude his serving as House Speaker. Gingrich also admits he gave the Ethics Committee inaccurate information, but he says that was unintentional. Republicans are quick to point out possible ethics problems at the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. CNN's Carl Rochelle reports. President Clinton, notorious for waiting until Christmas Eve to do his holiday shopping, is doing it a little earlier this year. Sunday afternoon, he headed for the mall at Union Station in search of presents. Mr. Clinton got a gift of sorts himself on Saturday when House Speaker Newt Gingrich admitted violating House rules by not being truthful to the House Ethics Committee. His admission ensured that controversy over wrongdoing by government leaders would now include both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue. If you want to continue uh, to use that irrational type of, of thinking, then you ought to be willing to ask Bill Clinton to resign his office because he's admitted that he's made mistakes and mistakes were committed uh, on his behalf. If, if the president has never admitted to being engaged in a tax fraud scheme that cost six million dollars, uh, that put six million dollars right. into his pocket and got tax deductions for his wealthy Congress friends. President Clinton has been pressured by questions of improper political influence and questionable political contributions. Last week he acknowledged that it was inappropriate for his friend Charlie Tree to bring a Chinese arms merchant to a White House social event Mr. Clinton's response to allegations of questionable political contributions was, both sides did it, and the solution is campaign reform. That, too, is controversial. Uh, I just have two words for the president, reform yourself. It's been against the law for as long as I can remember for foreigners to contribute to American elections. What we have to have is tough legislation. If Congress doesn't pass tough legislation in the early days, they will be saying this system is fine and we're buying into it. Battling between congressional Democrats, Republicans, and the White House over the last two years almost brought the government to a halt on several occasions. The question now is whether controversy in Congress over political wrongdoing will bring the government to its knees again. Carl Rochelle, CNN, the White House. The hostage standoff in Peru is nearing the end of its fifth day with no resolution in sight. Thousands of Peruvians marched Sunday, hoping to lift the spirits of captives while also demanding their release. CNN's Lucia Newman is live in Lima with the tales. Lucia? Jean, as you can see, it is now dark in Lima, but it is even darker inside the diplomatic compound behind me just down the street. 
They, for the second night in a row, there is no power, no electricity whatsoever in the compound. The, uh, there is no more gasoline for the generators. And despite the fact that the hostages have been pleading with authorities to turn power back on, they have not done so. A short while ago, three members of the International Red Cross went in with flashlights. But authorities are not allowing them to take in lanterns, lanterns or flashlights to the hostages. And the Red Cross is very concerned. This is making the situation inside much more tense. There are 340 people in there with some 15 well-armed and also very nervous rebels over, trying to watch over them and uh, so there is concern and yet there is no official explanation from authorities as to why they have refused to turn power back on. Now earlier in the day as you mentioned however there was some cause for cheer for the hostages. A huge march by Peruvians in the streets leading towards the compound showing their solidarity with the hostages demanding their release calling for their release and also calling for a negotiated settlement to this conflict but so far the rebels have been speaking only through two-way radios that are retransmitted via Peruvian television and that's the same way that President Alberto Fujimori has been transmitting his thoughts through television. Last night he made his first public statement, a very tough message to the rebels, where he refused to give in to their main demand and that is the freedom of some 400 of their imprisoned comrades. Now, this is, has a big problem. It's a public negotiation. And when negotiations are public, the people who are speaking are also speaking for their audiences. And when you speak for your audience, you like to look hard. Although the president sounds tough, informed sources say he assured Japan's foreign minister that force won't be used. You can see him here as he is, was preparing to return to Tokyo today, leaving the country, taking back to his government the, that message from Peru that force at least will not be used to settle this conflict. But many are already beginning to compare this, this standoff with the one that took place in Colombia over a decade ago when the Dominican embassy was overrun by M-19 rebels, when a lot of diplomats and other vi VIPs were also taken hostage. That, that standoff lasted for 61 days. Many are concerned that a similar wait may be in store for them here. Jean? Lucia, how is the lack of communications with the hostages affecting this situation? It is making the hostages very nervous and especially impatient. The foreign minister of Peru is in there and he has said that what is needed now is a direct line of communication between the rebels, their mediator and the government, not uh, in-betweens, which is what they've had so far. It seems to be slowing down any chance of a negotiated solution to this. That is the overwhelming feeling inside and outside. Of, of this compound and right now most of the hostages the only way they can get messages very often is through Peruvian and international television their relatives come they hold up signs they uh, they send messages through television they watch television all the time but there is no real direct line of communication and that is what they seem to want the most Gene. Lucia Newman in Lima Peru thank you for joining us the holiday season has been a little less than happy for thousands of U.S. travelers. About 3,000 value jet passengers are scrambling to make other plans following the airline's cancellation of flights to Dallas and Fort Myers, Florida. ValueJet says it canceled the flights because of problems with a charter running the routes. The discount carrier hired the charters after the FAA refused to allow it to fly the expanded routes itself. The cancellation left many travelers stranded and frustrated. ValueJet made promises to families, to friends, to people that don't have a lot of funds. And they literally just slapped us in the face and said, so what? I figured uh, the FDA had checked them all out and there'd probably be a better plane to fly. Yeah, but now what do you think? <laughs> I think they need to get together on something because I'm wrong. ValueJet is promising full refunds and a free ticket for another ValueJet flight. Whether people are taking to the air or the roads, the weather may affect their holiday travel plans. CNN's Ted Texter has our forecast. Ted.
May indeed, Gene. We're watching uh, now n new snow in the middle uh, western United States and in the north and the east. And we've had a lot of snow, as you know, across the western United States. Let me show you what that'll do on the surface if you are traveling by car or by bus, perhaps. From the Sierra Nevada, we have snow pictures for you. A lot has fallen, in fact, in some cases, feet of snow. It's very treacherous in the mountains. Be careful if you are traveling across the west. And now that the snow is moving into the north and east, uh, all the way across the country, in fact, Take the chains, take whatever precautions you may have to. And one real good precaution is to find a motel if it gets too tough for you. Let me show you what we expect to happen now in the week ahead. Here's the forecast weather map, or rather this is the uh, radar return, the, the latest snow that is falling across the upper Midwest. And let me tell you about uh, Chicago. We are experiencing up to one hour plus delays there at the airport. Now the forecast weather map for the week ahead shows you what we expect. In the north and the west, there will be a mountain snow uh, uh, quite a bit of it, in fact, would be quite a lot of uh, coastal rain in the north and west, too. Eastern United States, through the Great Lakes region, snow showers, and on the coast, it looks like we're going to see more rain. Temperatures well below normal in the north and central United States, on up into Canada. We'll have a complete rundown on the forecast for you coming up in just a little bit. Gene? Ted, thanks. Also ahead on Prime News, we'll take you aboard the high tech helicopter designed to save the lives of wounded U.S. troops. Prime News continues in just a moment. Reverend Jesse Jackson is among those speaking out against the Oakland, California school district's decision to recognize black English or Ebonics as a second language. He is urging the school board to reconsider its decision. CNN's Alan Duke has more on the debate surrounding the new policy. Like, you down with the crew. That's what bigotry means. And fib is like house. And what's up is like, how you doing? Street slang, black English or Ebonics. The Oakland, California School Board stirred up an old debate when it recognized Ebonics as a second language. All of our students do not come to us speaking standard English. We are saying that we want to acknowledge that and move students from, from that language to standard English. But when they're using it as a tool to teach them to speak proper English, then that's good. But reaction among many African-American leaders has been negative. That's an unacceptable surrender. It's teaching down to our children, and it must never happen. Some say black English is not a separate language. It's just slang. It's something that people use among their friends, but it's not something that they have to do to get ahead or have to do to get a job. It's something that you have to bring in extra teachers or somebody that's going to be financed to interpret it or understand it. I think that's, a, that's not really true. Okay, what Oakland school officials say they may ask for federal money to help African-American students who primarily speak Ebonics. Underlying this uh, decision by the California School Board on the teaching of, teaching of Ebonics, I think is, a, uh, is an insult to the children. It's as if to say, uh, you can't learn uh, English. A woman famous for her mastery of the English language, poet Maya Angelou, says she's frightened by the Ebonics movement. I'm incensed. Um, the very idea that African American language is a language separate from can be very threatening because it can encourage young men and women not to learn standard English. The drawback, many say, comes when you try to find a job. You out here, you were just like straight up, yo, what's up going on like that? That's something you use out here. When you're in the business world, you're not talking regular English, so you won't get ahead nowhere. A big question is what will this mean in the classroom, and will other school systems follow? Alan Duke, CNN reporting. It's slow going today for a man more accustomed to moving at lightning speed. Champion race car driver Bobby Unser is recuperating after what he calls a frightening ordeal in the mountains of New Mexico. Unser and a friend were stranded for two days without food after their snowmobiles broke down. The two men had to trudge through waist-deep snow to get to safety. And it was very frightening. I mean, there's no question about it. I thought everything that, that normally just happens easy just kept getting worse. Every time we rolled the dice, something bad came up. I mean, the weather was beautiful when we, when we left here. When we got up there, it just started blowing blowing snow really bad and we couldn't see where we were going. The men eventually found a barn with a phone and called for help. 
Curious George creator Margaret Ray has died in Cambridge, Massachusetts three weeks after suffering a heart attack. Ray and her husband began writing the children's book series while living in Paris in the 1930s. Once asked why she invented George, she said her reason was practical. They needed money. Margaret Ray was 90. Just ahead on Prime News... We'll hear some sounds of the holiday season. Stay with us. <laughs> Aircraft can save lives when every second counts. That's especially true in the military, where wounded soldiers must be rushed to medical treatment. The U.S. Army is now focusing its efforts on developing a new kind of medical helicopter. CNN's Dick Wilson looks at the prototype in our Tomorrow Today report. The look and sound of a Huey helicopter became a kind of visual symbol for the Vietnam War. It was often used for emergency medical evacuations. But the Huey is showing its age and the U.S. military wants to modernize. For decades, the Army used the Huey helicopter in medevac situations, but now they're converting to something faster, bigger, and more flexible, the Black Hawk. This is the Army's prototype for the evacuation and rescue helicopter of the future. It's been converted to a kind of hovering hospital crammed with about a million and a half dollars worth of new medical gear built into the basic Black Hawk. It can be switched in two minutes to any of three modes medical evacuation, troop transport, or cargo carrier. In the medical mode, the Black Hawk holds six patients on motorized stretchers that move up and down. Medics can quickly treat injuries with suction devices for cleaning out wounds, an array of medical supplies, and onboard oxygen generating equipment. This is the same kind of system that flies in the F-15 and F-18 aircraft. They, so there, we don't carry bottles, we don't carry liquid oxygen, we generate oxygen in the air off of bleed air from the engines. The Army Surgeon General hopes to obtain $189 million to retrofit 87 new medevac helicopters, saying it's the number one medical priority. Medics say the upgrade means more lives can be saved. The configuration with six patients allows for better patient care in the event that they are loaded in feet first and you always have the face of the person available to you. You also have the capability of moving around inside the cabin. So accessibility is the key thing here. The modified Black Hawk also has advanced communication and navigation gear, including an infrared camera that can find the wounded at night. Stand by for departure. For now, this particular Black Hawk is used on military missions by the Tennessee National Guard and is available for civilian use if commercial medical helicopters are tied up. Dick Wilson, CNN, Chattanooga, Tennessee. There's no vacancy at the Alice Hotel in Wichita, Kansas, but you might be able to get a parking spot there soon. The 66-year-old hotel came tumbling down Sunday morning with the help of 300 pounds of explosives. The implosion left a three-story high pile of rubble, which will be cleared away to make room for a parking lot. If you're traveling to Grandma's house or anywhere else this week, you may need to know the weather forecast. Here's Ted Texter. Ted? And we have it for you. There may be some clearing away needed across most of the western United States. A lot of snow has fallen in the mountains. There's rain still on the shore down into southern California. As you get into the mountains and into the plains, there's more snow that will fall tonight, but it should begin to taper off. You can still see the snow falling farther northward, too. Beginning to impact Chicago. Watch out there. Delays an hour plus a possibility through this nighttime. And in the north and the east, snow is falling. More rain showers developing just a bit farther to the south. And where does it all go? We start our forecast with what's going to happen through the nighttime and right on into Tuesday, in fact, into Christmas Eve. The wave developing on this front promises more snow showers from the mid-Mississippi River Valley through the Great Lakes. As we take you right on into Tuesday, you can see what's happening here with a cold front sliding to the south. That means chilly air headed that way. East Coast in pretty good shape until the front gets there. Then the showers will develop and some thunderstorms a possibility, too. Running through it one more time, notice it clears somewhat out in the western United States. High pressure building in there. 
The front again diving to the south, so rain showers lining up just ahead of it. Overnight low temperatures tonight are going to be very cold once again. North central United States uh, on up into Canada. Farther to the south, not looking quite as bad on down into parts of Dixie, Gulf Coast region. South and western United States, cold there. And then when it warms up through the afternoon into uh, Monday with highs in the southern tier of the U.S. down into Mexico. Very comfortably mild, hot, some would say, all the way up into the 80s there. But still very cold, north central U.S into the week. This is how we've summed up the weather for you for travel or perhaps packing tonight. Coastal rains and mountain snow in the north and the west. Lake snows through Wednesday and Thursday, Great Lakes region, after we get through this stuff tonight and tomorrow. Then in the south and the eastern United States, it looks like we're going to see some showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures overall are going to be very cold, north central United States, a little above normal in the south and the west, starting out mild, then cooler through most of the eastern U.S. And on up into Canada, of course, it's going to remain on the cold side. We have some detailed forecast now to get you through your Monday. Most of all, be careful out there. Watch out. There could be some delays on the West Coast, San Francisco, and Los Angeles tonight, too. We'll keep you updated. Gene? Ted, thank you. Coming up on The World Today at 10 p.m. Eastern. We'll take you to South Africa in the rhythmic heart of Soweto. And that's all for this edition of Prime News. I'm Jean Meserve in Washington. To our viewers around the world, thanks for joining us. For our domestic viewers, CNN Sports Illustrated is next. We leave you now with sounds of the Vermont Symphony. <laughs>